Have you ever had that feeling when it seems like the world stops and you just know that something is about to change? That's exactly how I felt that night when I saw Abigail in his arms. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to the beginning, to where everything was supposed to be simple, to dinner, a casual meeting meant for reminiscing. Why don't we have dinner with Richard? She casually suggested one evening, as if she were suggesting a cup of coffee. There was no urgency in her voice, as if she wasn't asking me to meet her ex-husband. Richard. Yes, that Richard. He was the one she had married before me. The one she divorced after a brief marriage. The one she had once called her biggest mistake. I hadn't thought about him in years, but Abigail seemed completely at ease, reassuring me that it was all in the past. Ancient history, as she put it with a smile brushing away any remaining concerns as if they were trivial. He's married now. It's just a friendly dinner, she added, making it sound so simple. All right. No big deal, I told myself. Maybe I was overreacting. After all, I had known Abigail for more than 23 years and trusted her completely. But still, something felt off. You know that vague, nagging feeling like a distant alarm in your mind that you can't quite place? That's what I felt, but I ignored it. After 23 years of marriage, why should I start doubting her now? The night of the dinner came, and Richard was exactly as I had expected, self-assured, too smooth for my taste, and still looking at Abigail as if she were the prize he almost won. He shot me sly glances, the kind that test a man's patience, but Abigail remained calm, laughing at his bad jokes and acting carefree. On the surface, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. She was the perfect wife, playing her role flawlessly, careful not to cross any lines. But then something began to change. They started recalling some old story, one of those back-in-the-day tales that went on too long. I was waiting for the punchline that never came. Instead, it felt like they were slipping into a moment they had once shared. Something personal, something that had nothing to do with me. That was the first crack. After that night, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. It gnawed at me like a warning sign I couldn't silence. Why now? Why, after all these years, was Richard suddenly back in her life? Abigail hadn't mentioned him in ages, and now he was just back in her world without explanation. Days passed, but that evening kept replaying in my mind, over and over again. I stayed silent, not knowing how to start a conversation. Even to me, it sounded paranoid. But things only got stranger. More dinners, more messages, which she stopped replying to the moment I entered the room. She started staying late at work more often, and when I asked her about it, she answered vaguely, as if explaining herself was a burden. This wasn't the Abigail I knew. She had always been open with me, but now she seemed distant, distracted like she was hiding behind a mask of someone I didn't recognize. One evening I did something I never thought I would. I followed her. Yes, I know, it sounds crazy. I had never been the jealous type, but the voice in my head kept demanding that I find out where she was going. She left around seven in the evening, saying she was meeting her friends. I waited a few minutes, then grabbed my keys and followed her. But she didn't meet her friends. No, she went to a bar the kind of place where people go to stay out of sight. And there, in a dimly lit corner, he was waiting for her. Richard stood there, smirking like a predator quietly returning to his hunting grounds. At first I tried convincing myself that perhaps there was nothing unusual about this. Just an innocent meeting, maybe. Maybe they were simply discussing unresolved issues from the past. Just two old friends reconnecting? I wanted to believe it was harmless. I needed to believe that. But then she leaned in too close, and he reached across the table, taking her hand as if it was the most natural thing in the world. That's when I felt the burning sensation, a fire igniting deep in my gut, quickly spreading through my veins, making my blood boil with rage. Everything seemed to move in slow motion. A high-pitched ringing filled my ears as the realization hit me. This wasn't just a random dinner meeting. No, it was something else, 
something far more deliberate. My hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly that my knuckles turned white. My breathing became erratic and uneven. What was I even looking at? My thoughts were tangled, a chaotic whirlwind of anger and confusion crashing down on me like a speeding train. I should have driven away, given myself time to cool down before I did something stupid. But I didn't. Instead, I stayed, my eyes glued to them, watching their every move. I watched her laugh at his jokes, lean into him as if the rest of the world didn't exist. And then it happened. He stood up as if nothing was out of the ordinary, as if everything was perfectly normal, and she followed him. Together, they walked out and got into his car. I didn't need a sixth sense to know what was going to happen next. My heart pounded violently in my chest. Blood rushed to my head, but there was no way I was going to let them drive off without knowing where they were headed. I followed them, keeping my distance, headlights off. I tried focusing on my breathing, tried calming myself down. Seven minutes later, they turned into a parking lot. But it wasn't a hotel, nor a house. It was just a park. Quiet. Dark a secluded spot where people go when they don't want to be seen. My chest tightened, and my mind raced with the worst possible thoughts. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw next. They stepped out of the car and just stood there for a moment, as if making some kind of decision. And then, without a hint of hesitation, he embraced her, and it wasn't a friendly hug. It was intimate. Intentional. No, this was far from innocent. His hands glided over her back, pulling her closer, and my wife of twenty-three years, Abigail, rested her head on his chest like it belonged there. I could barely comprehend what I was seeing. Time stopped. I sat there, frozen, watching the woman with whom I had built my life, our children, our home, all of it, dissolving in the arms of a man she once called a mistake. I felt detached from my own body, as if this nightmare was happening to someone else. I felt empty, hollow, but the anger, that was real. The rage was alive. Before I even realized it, I was already out of the car moving toward them. No, I wasn't just walking. I was storming toward them. My heart pounded so hard I thought it might explode. Abigail didn't notice me until I was nearly upon them. Abigail! I shouted, my voice cutting through the stillness of the night. They broke apart instantly as if shocked by an electric current. She whipped around, her face pale, eyes wide like she had just seen a ghost. And Richard? He remained calm. Too calm. That smug smile was still plastered on his face, as if he had been waiting for this moment all along. What the hell is going on here? I demanded, my voice trembling with fury. There was no turning back now. I needed answers, and I needed them right then and there. Abigail opened her mouth to say something, but no sound came out. Her face froze in confusion, as if she hadn't expected to be exposed, like she thought I would remain ignorant of what had been happening right in front of me. We were just... She tried to explain. I cut her off, unwilling to hear any excuses. Just what? Met here, in the middle of nowhere to reminisce? Because from where I'm standing, this doesn't look like an ordinary conversation. My voice grew louder with each word, fueled by the rage boiling inside me. Meanwhile, Richard stood there in complete silence, his hands shoved into his pockets, watching the scene like it was some kind of spectacle for his amusement. I felt my fists clench, the urge to unleash my fury on him growing stronger with every passing second. But I kept my focus on Abigail. She took a step forward, her face tight with an effort to stay calm clearly trying to maintain control of the situation. It's not what you think, William, she said softly, in a carefully measured tone. But her voice lacked sincerity. It was rehearsed, calculated. She was trying to keep me from snapping, to keep me from losing control. We were just talking, she insisted. We needed to clear things up. I laughed bitterly, hollowly. Clear things up, behind my back, clinging to him like he's your lifeline? After everything we've been through together? I could see the panic building in her, desperately searching for the right words, but they didn't come fast enough. 
I watched her thoughts race, trying to twist the situation to make me believe I was losing my mind. I wasn't hiding, she finally said defensively. I was going to tell you everything. I shook my head, fury rising within me. Oh, you were going to tell me? When, Abigail? After you were done clearing things up in the backseat of his car? I stepped forward, my fists still clenched, the weight of lies and betrayal crushing down on me. The years we had spent building our life together suddenly began slipping through my fingers. Richard shifted awkwardly before finally speaking. Look, man, it's not what you think. We were just... Shut up! I yelled, directing my rage at him. My whole body tensed, ready to explode. You have no right to speak. You have no right to explain anything to me. Abigail's eyes darted between me and Richard, as if she was caught in some twisted play, desperately trying to control both sides. She reached out to me, her hand trembling slightly, as if a simple touch could somehow fix the chaos she had created. William, please. It's not what you think. I... I didn't know what I was doing. I swear I was just... confused. Confused? I repeated bitterly, stepping back, my thoughts whirling in a storm. You've had twenty-three years to think about it, and now you're confused? A heavy, unbearable silence fell between us. In that silence, something inside me broke. The trust, the love, the very foundation of our life together, it all vanished in an instant. The worst part was that she didn't seem to feel any real remorse. I stood there, my world collapsing around me, waiting for her to say something, anything, that might help me make sense of what I had just witnessed. But no words came. Abigail was no longer the woman I once knew. Her familiar face had taken on strange, unfamiliar features, as if a stranger stood before me. She looked at me with a rehearsed innocence, but the cracks in her mask were too obvious. There was no trace of guilt or remorse, just a desperate attempt to keep everything under control. Richard, on the other hand, stood there with brazen calmness, as if nothing could disturb his composure. His tranquility only fueled the fire of my anger. I wanted to unleash all my rage on him, but I couldn't tear my eyes away from the woman I had spent twenty-three years with, the same woman who now looked at me as if I were the one who had done something wrong. William, please, she said, her voice calm and disturbingly steady. This isn't what you think. I just needed to talk to him. We wanted to settle some unresolved issues. We have a past together, but nothing happened, she muttered, stumbling over her words. I wouldn't. I couldn't, she continued, but I cut her off before she could finish. Couldn't what, Abigail? I asked. You couldn't betray me? Because that's exactly what I'm witnessing right now, I added, my voice full of anger. I saw her flinch slightly at my words, but she quickly regained control. William, stop being so dramatic, she said, her tone shifting. There it was, the patronizing tone she had perfected over the years, the one that always made me feel irrational, as if I was the unreasonable one for asking questions. You're blowing this way out of proportion. We were just talking. You lied to me, I shouted, my voice trembling with frustration. You've been lying to me for weeks, maybe even months, and now you expect me to believe this was just a friendly conversation in a dark park with your ex-husband? Do you think I'm a complete fool? For a moment, her composure faltered, and I caught a glimpse of panic in her eyes, but she quickly regained her footing. William, nothing happened, she repeated firmly, as if trying to convince not only me but herself as well. You're being paranoid. Paranoid? I repeated, disbelief washing over me. My world was crumbling before my eyes, and she still had the audacity to turn everything upside down. Do you really think I've made all of this up in my head? I'm standing right here, Abigail. I saw you in his arms. How stupid do you think I am? Her face hardened, and she crossed her arms over her chest, taking a defensive stance. I didn't expect you to react this way, she said coldly. It's not like I meet with him in secret every day. We just needed to close some unresolved issues, that's all. We were only talking. A bitter laugh escaped me, 
a sound I barely recognized as my own. Unresolved issues? After 23 years? You've had 23 years to resolve whatever was between you two, and suddenly, out of nowhere, you needed to close it. Then it hit me. It wasn't just about tonight. This had been building for a long time. The late returns, the sudden interest in fitness, the constant excuses about work. I had been blind, painfully and pathetically blind. How long has this been going on? I asked, barely holding myself together on the edge. She shifted awkwardly from foot to foot, and in that moment, I saw it. Hesitation. A flicker of guilt she had worked so hard to hide. It's not like that, she whispered, a sliver of truth finally breaking through her voice. It's not like that. I just... I got confused. Confused, I repeated, the weight of that word pressing down on me. My voice lowered to a menacing growl, and I could feel the last remnants of my self-control slipping away. No one, accidentally, ends up in a park at night, hugging their ex-husband. This wasn't some innocent mistake. How long has this been going on, Abigail? I demanded, feeling the tension in the air grow with every passing second. Sensing that the situation was escalating, Richard finally decided to speak. His tone was calm, trying to sound soothing, but it only irritated me even more. William, listen to me. I understand that you're upset, and you have every right to be, but nothing happened between us. We were just talking. Yes, I understand how it looks, but I didn't let him finish. I turned sharply toward him, moving so quickly that he instinctively stepped back. Don't you dare speak to me right now. This is between me and Abigail. Stay out of it. He raised his hands in a placating gesture, as if I were some kind of uncontrollable beast that needed calming. His movement only fueled my anger further. Whatever he thought he was doing, whether it was audacity or sheer stupidity, I wasn't about to let him escape the consequences. My gaze returned to Abigail, my mind racing to make sense of the situation. How long? I repeated, my tone low and threatening this time. The silence that followed was thick and suffocating. Every second dragged on, feeling like a painful eternity. Finally, she lowered her eyes, her voice barely a whisper. Three months. Three months. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut, knocking the breath out of me. It felt as if the ground beneath me had opened up. The woman I had built my life with, the mother of my children, had been secretly seeing him for three months. And when were you planning on telling me? I asked, my voice cold and hollow. After you decided if he was worth it? She finally looked up at me, and for the first time, I saw something resembling regret in her expression. William, I didn't want it to go this far. I didn't plan this. I was just confused and... Don't you dare say you were confused, I shouted, my voice cracking from the pain. You weren't confused, Abigail. You made choices over and over again. You chose to lie to me. You chose to hide. You chose him. She recoiled, her face twisted in pain. For a moment I saw cracks in her resolve, but before I could fully register this brief moment of vulnerability, Richard stepped forward again trying to intervene. We all need to calm down, he said, as if he had any right to dictate the mood in this situation. I couldn't take it anymore. Without thinking, I lunged at him, shoving him hard enough that he stumbled. His calm facade shattered as he struggled to regain his balance, raising his hands in a defensive posture. William, stop! Abigail cried, rushing between us. It's not worth it. Please, just stop. Not worth it? I echoed, my rage only intensifying. You no longer get to decide what's worth it. You destroyed everything, everything we had, everything we built, and for what? For this? Her eyes filled with tears, but I felt nothing anymore. No compassion, no sorrow. Not after what I had just learned. Months of deceit, lies, and betrayal. It was too much. And as I stood there looking at the woman I once thought was mine, I realized with cold clarity that I never really knew her. Maybe I never knew her at all. For a brief moment, everything around me blurred. Time seemed to slow, 
and a question tore through me from the inside. How could I have been so blind to all of this? I stood there, my fists clenched, my entire body trembling with a rage I had never felt before. The weight of her betrayal hit me like a massive boulder, making it hard to breathe. Abigail stood frozen in place, motionless. Her face was streaked with tears, but they seemed empty, as if they had come too late to change anything. I didn't care about her tears. I needed answers. I wanted to scream, to collapse, but more than anything I wanted to understand. Why? Why him? Why now, after everything we had built? Richard stood beside her, completely unruffled. He didn't flinch, watching everything as if it didn't concern him. It was Abigail who was risking losing everything, and as I watched her fall apart in front of me I realized the full weight of her choice. Why, Abigail? I asked, stepping closer to her, my voice shaking with barely contained fury. Why him? Why now? Twenty-three years of marriage, a lifetime of memories, the children we raised together, all of it collapsed in an instant. How did she end up in his arms? Why? Abigail sobbed, wiping her face, and gasped for breath as she tried to speak. I... I don't know, William, she whispered, her voice trembling. This wasn't supposed to happen. She forced herself to continue, as if trying to convince both of us. I didn't plan this. Richard just showed up, and the feelings I thought were long gone came back. I got confused. Confused? I repeated, the word bitter on my tongue. I shook my head, barely able to believe what I was hearing. That's your excuse? Confused? I let out a bitter, joyless laugh and stepped back. Confusion doesn't last for months, Abigail. Confusion doesn't make you lie, cheat, and betray your family. This wasn't confusion. You made a choice. You chose him. Her lips quivered, but I saw something more in her eyes. Beneath the tears and desperation, there was something else. A flicker of resentment. I didn't choose him, she suddenly said sharply, her voice rising, catching me off guard. I didn't want to choose anyone. But I was exhausted, William. Tired of feeling invisible, like I was just part of the daily routine. You stopped noticing me a long time ago. And Richard? He made me feel alive again. And there it was. The brutal truth, hitting me like a punch to the gut. She had twisted her betrayal into something that was, somehow, my fault. My fists clenched tighter, my nails digging into my palms as I fought to contain my anger. Invisible? I echoed, disbelief in my voice. I worked myself to exhaustion for this family, to make sure we had everything we needed, to make sure our children were okay. And now you're telling me you cheated on me because you felt neglected? Do you think I never felt neglected? Do you think it was easy for me? I shook my head, feeling the anger boiling inside me. But I didn't run to someone else, Abigail. You didn't come to me. You didn't even try. You just ran to him. She turned away, unable to meet my gaze. Her silence spoke louder than any words she could have said. The mask she had worn for so long began to fall away, revealing the truth. A woman who had lied, choosing her own desires over everything we had built. And then, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, Richard spoke. Of course, he couldn't stay silent. William, he said in his infuriatingly calm voice, this isn't all on Abigail. I reached out to her. We have a history, my friend. It's hard to believe, I know, but our connection existed long before you came into the picture, and something like that doesn't just disappear. My eyes narrowed into a sharp glare. Do you really think that matters to me? I snarled. I stepped closer, almost right up to him. You had your chance with her, and you blew it. Now she's my wife. We've built a life together. You can't just waltz back in after all this time and pretend you still have some claim on her. His jaw tightened, but I could see him holding back, trying to keep calm. And that only made me want to hit him more. His gaze flicked to Abigail, who stood between us like some prize we were fighting over. The sight made me sick. Sensing the rising tension, Abigail broke the silence. She stepped between us, 
physically pushing us apart as if we were boys quarreling over a toy. Stop it! Both of you! Enough! She yelled, her voice trembling with strain. This solves nothing! William, she turned to me, her tone softened. I told you the truth. I made a horrible mistake. But this... this won't fix anything. I glared at her, barely keeping the rage inside me in check. I felt my entire body trembling as anger surged just beneath the surface. So what now, Abigail? What's your grand plan? I demanded. Are you going to run off with Richard again? Throw away twenty-three years for the man you've already divorced once? My words dripped with sarcasm. Or do you expect me to pretend none of this happened? To forgive you because you were confused? She stood there, silent for a few moments her eyes darting between me and Richard. And then, she hesitated. She actually hesitated. It felt like a dagger straight to my chest. In that moment, the brutal truth hit me. She still hadn't made a decision. Even after everything, after the lies, the betrayal, she was still torn, still deciding between me and him. Anger, pain, betrayal, all of it erupted within me at once. Unbelievable, I muttered my voice suddenly disturbingly calm. Even now, after everything, you're still thinking about him. You still haven't decided whether this marriage is worth saving. William, it's not that simple, she whispered, her eyes pleading for me to understand. It's exactly that simple, I cut her off, stepping back as a cold clarity began to settle in me. It's perfectly clear. Either you want to save this marriage or you don't. But you know what? I laughed bitterly, shaking my head. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm done being your second choice. I'm done fighting for someone who can't even look me in the eye and choose me over the man she already left once. Richard stayed silent, the smug look on his face slowly fading as the seriousness of the situation dawned on him. Abigail stood there, tears streaming down her face, but it didn't move me. Not after what I'd seen not after what she had done. For the first time in a long while, I felt like I had some control. My heart was shattered, but in the midst of all the pain, I found a strange, cold clarity. Go, Abigail. Go home with him, I said quietly, firmly, turning away. You've already made your decision. With those words, I walked away, leaving them behind, their pathetic excuses hanging in the air. The rage inside me didn't subside. It roared like a fire that wouldn't die down, no matter how far I walked. I reached the car, gripping the steering wheel so tightly my hands shook. For a long time I just sat there, staring into nothing, trying to grasp what had just happened. Twenty-three years of my life, gone in a matter of moments. I gave her everything. My trust, my love, and our shared future, which we had envisioned together. We built a life raised children, and made plans that felt unshakable. But now, all of it seemed like a terrible lie. It was as if I had been blind to the reality that had always been in front of me. Even now, looking in the car's rearview mirror, I could see their figures in the distance under the dim park light, standing almost motionless. I imagined them whispering, planning their next moves as if my life had been just a temporary obstacle in their story. My fingers gripped the steering wheel so tightly that my knuckles turned white from the strain. Every instinct screamed at me to leave, to escape this nightmare and erase it from my memory. But something inside me had broken. I couldn't just drive away. Not like this. I slammed the car door shut and walked toward them with determination, each step filled with more rage and uncertainty. I had no plan. I didn't know what I would do or say, but I knew I couldn't let it end like this. Not with her torn between us. Not with Richard standing there, smug, as if he had already won. As I got closer, I saw them talking. Abigail was crying again, her hands covering her tear-streaked face, while Richard stood beside her, his hand on her shoulder as if playing the role of the sympathetic friend. It turned my stomach. They were so absorbed in their world that they didn't notice me at first. But as I approached, Richard finally lifted his eyes and met my gaze. 
His hand immediately fell from her shoulder, as though he'd been caught doing something indecent. Abigail turned to face me, her face swollen from crying, but I felt no compassion. I was no longer here to be the hurt husband. I had come to end this. What else do you want, William? she asked, her voice trembling, full of exhaustion from it all. I've told you everything. There's nothing more to discuss. You think it's over? I said quietly but with rage, barely holding back the storm inside. You really think I'm just going to walk away and let the two of you continue? All this? She stared at me, confusion flickering in her eyes, as if she was desperately trying to maintain some semblance of control over the situation. What do you want me to say? I confessed everything. I told you the truth. The truth? I scoffed bitterly, letting out a short laugh and shaking my head. You didn't tell me the truth, Abigail. You told me your version, the one where you're the innocent, confused wife who just happened to fall back into the arms of her ex-husband. I didn't believe her anymore. She took a step toward me, raising her hands as if she could calm me with just a gesture. William, I didn't want it to happen like this. I'm not choosing him. I'm not choosing. I just... I felt lost. I didn't know how to talk to you. I didn't know how to ask for more. Ask for more? I repeated, disbelief in every word. So hiding behind my back with him, that was your way of asking for more? Was that easier than just telling me you were unhappy? Her lips trembled, and for a moment, I thought I saw something real in her. Maybe regret. Maybe guilt. But before I could understand it, Richard stepped between us, positioning himself as a barrier. William, calm down, he said, his voice steady, as if he were the rational one here. This solves nothing. We all need to go home, take a break, and think. Cooler heads will prevail. Cooler heads? I repeated, stepping closer to him until our faces were just inches apart. You don't get to talk about cooler heads. You're the reason we're here. You couldn't stay away, could you? You just had to insert yourself back into her life, and now you think you can walk away as if it doesn't matter? He didn't flinch, but the tension hidden in his clenched jaw betrayed his inner unease. It's complicated, William. There's too much unresolved between us, he said, his voice heavy with a meaning that didn't need explaining. I let out a low, growling sound and shoved him hard in the chest. You're just a ghost from her past. You don't matter anymore. Richard staggered but quickly regained his footing. His gaze sharpened and now his resolve to stand his ground was clear. I don't want to fight you, man. This isn't about us. It's about her. She's been unhappy for a long time. Before anything else could happen, Abigail stepped between us, her voice shaky and tense, as if she was holding on by a thread. Stop it! Both of you! Just stop! Her words hung in the air, heavy and unresolved. This doesn't solve anything. I've already messed everything up, okay? Is that what you want me to admit? That I ruined everything? That I'm the villain here? I glared at her, my chest heaving with every angry breath. But the rage inside me didn't subside. She looked smaller than ever, broken under the weight of her own deceitful actions. But I no longer had any sympathy left for her. Not anymore. You're right, Abigail, I said slowly, my voice cold and merciless. You did destroy everything. And the worst part? You didn't even have the courage to admit it until I dragged the truth out of you. Today you didn't choose him, and you sure as hell didn't choose me. No, you chose yourself, your selfishness, your mess. And now what? You expect me to feel sorry for you? She tried to say something, but I cut her off. I gave you 23 years of my life, 23 years of trust. And what did I get in return? Lies, betrayal, secret meetings with this pathetic excuse of a man? Richard tensed, but I didn't care. I hadn't cared for a long time. He was no longer a threat, just a sad reminder of the ruins my life had become. Abigail was openly sobbing now, but her sobs sounded hollow. I had heard them too many times before, always believed they were genuine, always hoped she was still the woman I once loved. 
but now her tears were just an empty sound. I looked at both of them, feeling the full force of the betrayal wash over me, the deceit, the wasted years on a person I had never truly known. And suddenly, something clicked inside me, a cold, hard clarity. You're right, Abigail, I repeated. Now my voice was more controlled than it had been all evening. You destroyed everything, and now I'm leaving. Take him or leave him. I don't care. But you? You're no longer my concern. With those final words, I turned and walked away, this time for good. I got into my car, slammed the door, and stared at the dark, empty road ahead. The silence was deafening. I could no longer hear her crying. I didn't see Richard's smug face. For a moment I felt nothing. A deep, hollow numbness. The kind that's left when everything has burned down to ashes. I should have felt relieved. I should have been proud that I finally walked away. That I rose above the betrayal of the one person I had trusted. But instead, I was filled with nothing but emptiness. Twenty-three years, gone in an instant. What do I do now? Where can I go from here? Everything I built, everything that once made sense in my life has crumbled around me. I turned the key in the ignition, and the engine roared to life. I had no idea where I was headed, but staying here wasn't an option. Anywhere, but here. I gripped the steering wheel tighter, accelerating into the night, feeling the weight of everything that had happened bearing down on me. Thoughts raced through my mind, trying to make sense of it all. How had everything spiraled so far out of control? I couldn't help but think back to the beginning. I remembered my first encounter with Abigail. Her smile, her laughter, the warmth of her touch. Every little thing that once drew me to her now seemed like it belonged to a different time, a different life. The woman I saw in the park wasn't the one I married. She wasn't the same woman who had raised our children. She was someone else entirely. Or maybe, deep down, she had always been like this, and I just hadn't noticed. The car surged forward as I pressed harder on the gas, the headlights cutting through the empty streets. It didn't matter where I was going. The only thing I could focus on was how quickly everything had fallen apart. How did we go from shared dinners, old stories, and dreams of the future to this? To me, driving aimlessly, my marriage in ruins. Richard's face flashed in my mind and I slammed my foot on the gas in anger. That smug bastard. How long had he been lurking in the shadows, waiting for his moment to destroy everything? Was this his plan all along? And Abigail? How could she let it happen? My hand slammed down on the steering wheel and I screamed into the silence of the car. Rage overtook me. Anger, confusion, pain, all tangled together into a knot I couldn't untie. One thing was clear. I couldn't go back to that house tonight. I couldn't face the emptiness left behind by my broken marriage, her betrayal still hanging in the air. And the kids. God, what about the kids? How would I explain this to them? How do you tell your children that their mother, who tucked them in at night and loved them, decided that it wasn't enough anymore? That she wanted something else? That she was lost? They wouldn't understand. Hell, even I didn't understand. I pulled into a gas station and killed the engine. My hands were shaking, my breathing unsteady, as the full reality of the situation crashed down on me. There was no more room for denial. There was no point in justifying her actions or hoping that things could be fixed. Abigail had betrayed me. She had destroyed everything I thought was ours, and now I was sitting in a parking lot, trying to grasp the fact that my life no longer belonged to me. I leaned back in the seat, closing my eyes, desperately hoping for a moment of peace amidst the chaos inside. But every time I closed my eyes, the images returned. I saw them together again. The way she leaned into him, the look in her eyes as if she had found something, or someone, that she had been searching for all this time. It made me sick. And the worst part? A small, stupid part of me still wanted to believe that this was a mistake. That she would wake up and regret it. That she would beg for forgiveness. For a second chance. 
But I couldn't be that naive anymore. I couldn't allow myself that. This wasn't a mistake. It was a choice, a cold, calculated choice. And no matter how much I wanted to believe she might regret it, that she could somehow fix it all, I knew the truth. The woman I had fallen in love with was gone. The Abigail I knew had disappeared long before that evening. I just didn't want to see it. I exhaled slowly, staring blankly at the neon lights of the gas station. The distant hum of traffic was the only sound breaking the silence of the night. My phone buzzed again in the cup holder beside me, but I didn't even reach for it. I already knew it was Abigail. She was probably trying to smooth things over with another half-hearted apology. No doubt she was saying that none of this was supposed to happen, that she didn't want things to spiral out of control. She would want to talk. She'd say she was sorry. But what could she say that I hadn't already heard a hundred times? No apology would change what she had done. No matter how many times she said, I'm sorry, it wouldn't erase the months of betrayal. Months of lies right to my face. Months of her choosing someone else over me, time and time again. My eyes stayed locked on the phone as her name flashed on the screen again, my finger hovering just above it. Part of me wanted to hear her out, but another part of me wanted to hurl the phone at the dashboard and watch it shatter into pieces. But I did neither. I just let the phone buzz again and again, each vibration a painful reminder of what our life once was. She didn't deserve to know she had broken me. Not today. And never again. I leaned back in the seat, staring at the empty, cloud-covered sky through the windshield. A deep, shaky breath escaped my lungs. What now? Time seemed to crawl as I sat there, parked and lost, with thoughts spinning in my head. Questions I knew I would never get answers to. Eventually the phone went silent. Maybe she'd run out of things to say. Or maybe she had given up. But it didn't matter anymore. I wasn't going to read her messages. Whatever excuses or empty promises she tried to string together couldn't change what she had done. My hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly that my knuckles turned white from the strain. It felt like I was watching someone else's life fall apart, like it wasn't happening to me. How did it come to this? How does the woman you thought you knew so well turn into a stranger in an instant? I had believed that we were solid, not perfect. No one is perfect, especially after 23 years. But we were stable. I thought we had built something that could withstand anything. We had our routines, our fights, our good and bad days. But wasn't that just life? I never imagined she would be the one to tear it all down. Secret meetings with her ex-husband like they were reliving some twisted version of their past. And Richard, smug, arrogant Richard, acting as if he had been waiting all this time for her to come back to him. The thought of them together made me sick, imagining his hands on her. Worse, imagining that she allowed it. My mind kept replaying that scene in the park, where they stood so close to each other, like I wasn't even there. Like I didn't matter in their world anymore. I wanted to hate her. I wanted to be consumed by rage, to use it as fuel for what she had done, for blindsiding me like this. But it wasn't that simple. Anger was natural, but the sadness, it was unbearable. It felt like grief, as if I was mourning the woman I had loved for so long, the mother of my children, the person I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with. I exhaled, feeling the weight of it all pressing down on me, too heavy to bear. The betrayal, the confusion, the anger, it was suffocating me. There was no escape from it. Not tonight, and probably not for a long time. And then my thoughts turned to the kids. How was I supposed to explain all of this to them? How could I tell them that their mother, the woman they looked up to, had chosen to leave our family? That she had gone back to someone from her past? Someone I thought was long gone? They'd have questions I wouldn't be able to answer. Hell. I didn't even understand what had happened. I could already picture the pain and confusion on their faces, maybe even accusations directed at me. And I would have to be the one to bear it all, to stay strong for them, even though all I wanted to do was collapse. I had no idea how I was going to get through this. 
I never thought that divorce would become a reality for us. Yes, we had our tough moments, but I always believed we could get through them. That was my truth, until it stopped being true. Now, just the thought of Richard interacting with my children fills me with rage. The mere fact of his presence in their lives feels like a violation. He doesn't deserve the right to be part of the life I worked so hard to build with Abigail, part of the family we created together. The idea that he could be near my children awakens something primal in me, as if I'm ready to destroy everything just to protect them from any poison he might bring into their world. But what if Abigail wants him in their lives? What if after all this chaos, she actually chooses Richard? What would that mean for our children? I consulted a lawyer and took action. Two weeks later, I gathered plenty of evidence of her affair and filed for divorce. I had no intention of leaving the children with a mother like that. When everything was ready, I acted, and after the court proceedings, I was granted full custody of the children, while Abigail walked away from our marriage with nothing. Three months after the divorce, I heard that Richard had left her and disappeared. She had made a huge mistake by getting involved with him again, but that's no longer my problem. My friend, and this is the end of the story. If you liked this story, then put your royal like and subscribe to the channel. May the force be with you.